And we may have a problem, Dave. Houston, we have a problem. Houston, we got a problem. I think we got a problem. Got a, got a problem. Small journal, crankshaft 327. And the bearings that we've got are uh, large journal 327 bearings. So we're going to uh, take a short break here. We're going to go up front, get the correct main bearings and the correct rod bearings. And then we'll, uh, we'll be right back in touch. I think we got a problem. Got a, got a problem. Let's go. Thank you. Welcome to Benning Auto Parts Facebook page and to all of our YouTube subscribers. Uh, good to see everybody this morning. So it's Saturday morning here at the shop. Kind of quiet. The front counter is closed, so we can uh, we can get a lot of stuff done in the back uh, without much interruption today. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna get started this morning. What we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight the build on the 327 out of the 65 Chevy Corvette. So uh, let's talk about that a little bit this morning. We're going to talk about the process of the build, where we're at so far and where we're headed. So uh, let's get this thing uncovered and I'll kind of go over of, uh, what we've already gotten accomplished. So what we've done, we've, uh, we've got our block, uh, all the machine work is done on the block. Uh, we've got it honed. It's uh, 30 over, 327, so it's a four inch old 30 bore. We've gotten the brass freeze plugs installed. We've got uh, the new cam bearings installed. And we've got it uh, painted up real good, Chevy orange. But what we have done, we did this yesterday afternoon. I have uh, put all of the main bearings in and we have torqued the main caps down. So these, uh, this is a small journal 327, uh, 67 and some of 68 was the last 327 small journals, uh, what we uh, call small journal crankshaft. And then after that, starting in uh, 68 forward, everything became what we term large journal. Bearing, the main bearings are larger, rod bearings are larger. But anyway, for, for, our, for our application today, this is a small journal. So what we've done, uh, I've got all the mains installed, as you can see. We've got all the caps installed. We've got all the caps uh, torqued down to uh, 65 foot pounds. We have uh, taken our crankshaft, which is down in the balance room right now, but we have taken our, our crankshaft and measured the uh, main journal sizes and uh, got that size, and then we've measured the inside diameter of our main bearings, and we've calculated our main bearing clearance. So there's a particular number that we look for on that. Uh, this is a street application motor. Doesn't need to be real loose, but you want to make sure it's real, not real tight. So we're at, on these, we're at 2000s clearance. So that's 0 0.002. Now, let me put into perspective what that means. So the, the main journal is a certain size, let's say it's two inches. So the inside diameter is actually two thousandths smaller than that. So that difference in this size and the crankshaft journal size is the clearance, uh, main bearing clearance, which in this case, it's two thousand. And that's a good number. It'll work real good in this application. Now, we did check our rods. Uh, the rods bearings, uh, we had put them into the rods. We had them torqued down. Again, small journal rod, we torqued them down. They torqued to uh, 35 foot pounds on those. So we were kind of all over the board on the rod bearing clearance. We were as little as a half thousandth to about one and a half thousandths. Well, a half thousandths is really just, it's not enough. 
So what we decided to do is we're going to take all eight rods and we're going to recondition all eight rods and put the inside diameter of the rod at exactly what the factory spec calls for. We're going to do that next week. We didn't have time to get it done yesterday, but we are going to do that uh, first part of next week and then we'll have our rods ready uh, and then we'll start uh, putting our pistons and rods and rings uh, into the motor. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to, the next step is uh, we're going to go down to the balance room and we're going to set up and let you watch the uh, balance and actual balancing of the crankshaft. We're going to do that today. And then once we get that crankshaft balanced, uh, we'll bring it back up here. <clears throat> we'll get the crankshaft installed, rear main seal installed, camshaft installed, timing installed. This particular engine, we're going to use file fit rings. So uh, we'll probably get started file fitting the rings, uh, hopefully today, uh, this afternoon sometime. So that's, that's kind of our plan for today. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Uh, this is a, a little progress of, uh, of where we're at right now. And of course, we'll, we'll get that crankshaft balance. That'll take a little bit of time, probably take an hour, hour and a half to get that done. But then once we get that done, then we'll, uh, like I said, we'll put the shaft in and get everything torqued in and checked out, and it'll be good to go. So we're going to take just a short break as we move from the, the engine build shop down to the crankshaft uh, balancing area, and then we're going to uh, do a little video of how we balance this crankshaft, so you'll get to see that. So this balancing the crankshaft is the next step in the process. So well, we hope you enjoy it. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right, here we go. Welcome back. Uh, we are, have moved from the uh, engine assembly room over to the uh, crankshaft grinding area. So this is the customer's uh, shaft. We've got it sitting on the on the stands, ready to go. We're going to. Uh, I've already weighed this, uh, made his bob weight up. The bob weight on this particular uh, engine assembly is eighteen sixty. So we're going to go ahead and uh, bolt on the bob weights. Uh, on each of the rod journals. We'll start with the number one and number two journal right here. So I'll let you watch how that goes. Well, this is the bob weight. It's 1,860 grams. And basically what that represents, you see it split right here. One side is one piston and rod assembly. The other side is the other piston and rod assembly. These particular ones are cylinders number one and number two. Number one being on the left-hand front the number two being on the right hand front. So they will bolt right here on this journal and this will actually act just like the piston rod assembly when we're spinning it. So we're gonna go ahead and get them bolted on real quick. We got to do four of them. Always center these on the rod journal and you make them 90 degrees perpendicular to, in other words, 90 degrees this way. Always snug those up. Uh, you sure don't want a kind of weight to come flying off on it. I'm going to center this one just a little bit better. All right, that's the first one on. We'll go to the second one. The second rod journal right here is cylinders uh, three and four. Of course, all these bob weights we built at 1860, they're all the way, all the way exactly the same. Here we're 90 degrees, which we are. We had done several features on uh, on engine balancing in the past on some of our other videos, so I figured we'd kind of incorporate this balance in with this 327 build that we're doing to kind of give everybody a little bit of a refresher course of how it goes. All right, the third one, which would be one, three, be five and six. Five on the driver's side and then six on the passenger side. So on the arrangement on the Chevrolet is 1357 down the driver's side, 2468 down the passenger side.
They don't have to be super tight, but you just want them good and snug. You sure don't want them, number one, you don't want them turning and spinning. You sure don't want them coming off. The initial spin, we do the initial spin at 300 RPM. And once we get it down to within pretty close tolerances, we'll speed that up to a 500 RPM. We've got now all of our counterweights bolted on. This uh, 327 and, and all 327s are what we call internally balanced. In other words, all of the balancing is actually on the crankshaft. The flywheel is neutral. The harmonic uh, balancer is neutral. But we like to bolt those on anyway and just check them and spin them with those two components bolted on. That gives us a real, uh, a real accurate, accurate balancing because that's, they're going to be run on the engine once we put all this together and put it into the block. So we're going to, next thing we're going to do, because we've got all, all the counterweights are on. Next thing we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the harmonic balancer on it, uh, which won't take but a few minutes to the, special installer we use on that, so uh, we'll get to that next. We use a special harmonic balancer installing tool. So this is a harmonic balancer installation tool that we use. As you can see, it, it threads right in the front of the crankshaft. It's a little bit of touch of a, of a some assembly grease on the front of it here for ease of installation. But we're gonna go ahead and put the start the balancer. Got a keyway, just line it up on the keyway like that. Uh, this is the uh, installation tool. Like I said, this threads in the nose of the crankshaft and then this nut right here, once we get in, we'll turn this and it pushes the balancer on. Never drive one on with a hammer if you can help it. Not not a good idea. Damage the balancer. And sometimes you can't get it on straight. It gets a little crooked. So, so that's ready to go. So basically what we do is we uh, hold it. Hold it there, use this big wrench, and it takes a few minutes and we just push it right on. Some of them, believe me, some of them are harder than others. Actually, this one here is, uh, feels good going on. So. We've already got our timing gear installed. Uh, that's part of the balancing. Uh, if you want that installed, uh, a lot of times we don't have the customer's gear. We'll, we'll use one of ours. But this particular case, this is the gear that we're going to be using. So we went ahead and installed it. So it's, it's in place and it won't have to come up back on. It takes a few turns on this nut to get it on there. Well, the purpose of the balancer, if you don't know, is to, it, it actually, it's a harmonic. So the word harmonic means it absorbs the uh, harmonics that are put out by the crankshaft spinning. It's absorbed in this balancer right here. So that's why it's an important part 
you can see it's got an elastic ring in it. And then it's got an outer hub, an inner hub with an elastic ring, and that's what does the, the absorbent of the harmonics. All right, so that's on there. Remove our installer. Put the installer off, so that's good to go. Next thing we're going to put on is we're going to put on the customer's flywheel. So this is a uh, this is a standard shift car. So it's uh, got a Tremac five speed in it. So we've already installed a new uh, pilot bushing in the back of the crankshaft for him. We had taken out a roller pilot bushing, which actually the needle had locked up in it, and we replaced it with a standard Chevrolet uh, bronze pilot bushing. So got that ready. So let's go ahead and install the flywheel. Get a couple bolts started so it doesn't fall off and hurt me or David's foot. I'm saying they're pretty, pretty heavy. Flywheel install. So we have a rotating assembly right here that's ready to put the belt on it, put the front sensor on it, and then uh, we'll get a first spin, see where we're at. So let's, uh, we got to put a crankshaft bolt in the front of it. Sensor right here, this picks up the, senses the flywheel or the uh, rotating assembly and sends a signal to the computer. So we're going to get this hooked up. Okay, we've got the sensor hooked on. I'm going to grab a level real quick. I want to level this. This is adjustable up and down, so we want this completely level. So I'm going to grab a level real quick.